Welcome, Bashar. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Exciting. I'm so excited. I thought that you would say no to this interview. Why would you say that? Because you you didn't you didn't read the the message that I sent to you. I said, oh, awful. I want I want Bashar in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I you know I, I gotta say this year this is the first podcast that I do, oh. and I haven't done a podcast in a long time. For the longest time, I just said you know I I don't want I want to focus on the business. Uh, and we can talk more about focus uh, later. Yeah, on, we're but, going to talk about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I appreciate you inviting me. No, no, it's a pleasure to me to have you here because the first time I met you in Quantum, to yeah. me was like blowing up that we start at the same time this business, mm. but you grow so fast. Yeah. To me, it was like, oh my God, oh, every one of us can achieve that if we do the right things, you know? Sure. To me, it was uh, like, oh, it's possible. And yeah. it's possible to do it fast and to do it well. Right. So that's what I want to talk to you right now about mm -hmm. how you grow your university. Right. Okay. But first of all, I read about you that you dropped your university, but now yes. you're having a university. <laughs> so I want to know what happened, you know? Well, see, it's it's a different kind of your university, right? I dropped out of a traditional university. And then because of the traditional school system really uh, failed me, I decided to start my own university after having found success on the untraditional route. And my mom wanted me to become a doctor. You know, that was her thing because my sister is a lawyer. And so for her, you know, to show off in front of her sisters and friends, you know, my daughter is a lawyer, my son is a doctor. So for her, it would be like, you know, a dream come true. And for the longest time, she sold me on that idea. And then I went to school. I just realized that like I would be in, I, I started going to college. I would be in class or I'd be at the library trying to study and I'm, um, you know, I have my head shoved in the book and literally a fly would like go across the library on like a mile away and I would get distracted and I just could never focus. Mm. But you start medicine, uh, medicine school. Well, I, I had not started yet. I was in uh, community college okay, okay. and I just realized now looking back at it, it wasn't because for the longest time I thought I was just unfocused, but now looking back at it, it wasn't that it was just, I wasn't inspired. And that's the thing that I see with a lot of people is that they get labeled things. And that's why I always tell people, be very careful with putting labels on yourself and putting labels on others, especially your children or your mm. siblings or people that look up to you. Because like, you know, people say you're lazy or, you know, my sister is lazy. This person is lazy. They're not lazy. They're just uninspired. Mm. And that was the thing with me is I was just uninspired to become a doctor. But then once I found the thing that I'm passionate about, like today, I just literally work 24 seven, you know, and, and I never because feel part tired of your life. Yeah. Right. And because it inspires me, you know, mm. so school system just did not do it for me. Um, I went into entrepreneurship, lost a bunch of money, uh, launched nine businesses, seven of which failed. And then finally, the business number eight was uh, was online first ever online business 2015. And um, and then after that, business number nine, which is BJK University. Uh, this is my last business. Uh, it was educating people mm. and uh, teaching them what I have learned in that, you know, in 90 days or less, you could actually have a skill that you can turn into income um, without wasting tens of years mm. and thousands of dollars learning pretty much stuff you'll never use, you know? Yeah, like university, like yeah. traditional university. Right, right. Uh, but before going deep into your business, I want to ask you about your backgrounds, sure. right? So I want to know where you was born. Yeah. And how was your family and all, all that when you sure. were a kid? So I was born in, uh, in uh, 1990 in Iraq. Um, growing up, my dad was... So prior to me being born, uh, my father was uh, very wealthy in the 70s and 80s in Iraq. He owned the second largest factory of clothing in Iraq. And so like in the 80s, he was worth like 30 or 40 millions of million dollars or something like something huge, you know? And the war happened. Uh, it's called the Gulf War, 1991. Uh, the Iraqi dinar went from, it used to be in 1988, I think it was one dinar used to equal three U.S. dollars. Oh my God. It went to one U.S. dollar to equaling 1,200 dinars. Oh, like Venezuela, like my country. Really? Yeah. 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 And so literally my father went from ultra wealthy to ultra broke overnight because now he had a whole bunch of cash that was worth zero, you know? And so his business is shut down. Everything shut down. Um, he was around 50 years old at the time. So he wasn't young. And uh, he just took it very, very hardly. And, uh, you know, some things that he's uh, he's a little stubborn, got a big ego. And I love that about him because it taught me a lot of things and, and you know, that it helped me become who I am today. Um, and so he wasn't able to pivot very quickly into new things. And uh, from there, just things kind of tumbled down. So 
growing up, he felt like he had never, he hadn't like treated me or offered me the kind of opportunity that he had offered my siblings because they grew up to a wealthy father. They always had everything. You know? Are you the small one? I am the youngest one. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And so he always had that. Like I haven't, you know, I haven't become the kind of father that I really wish to be because I've done so much for his, you know, brothers and sister, but not to him. Um, so 2003 happens, uh, uh, the U S invasion to Iraq happens. I'm 13 years old. Everyone is happy because now the ruler of Iraq that's been ruling for 35 years is gone and you know, everything's going to be great, but it becomes like a million times worse. Yeah. And now we have like cars, explosions and bombings and killings and all that stuff literally on the streets. Two years later, my dad is like, okay, this is not going anywhere. We got to get the hell out of here. Uh, so 2006, we migrated into the U.S. We went to Detroit, Michigan, and lived there for a year. First time ever in a foreign country. I had never traveled out of the uh, you out of speak Iraq. English. I did not speak English. Uh, we had no relatives. We pretty much had no money because at the, my dad was, um, like if you looked at us from the outside, we looked very wealthy because we lived in a very nice home. We had properties, but we had zero cash for like 15 years mm -hmm. because my dad didn't have, he had all these properties they had accumulated. But he didn't have cash flow coming in, right? He could not sell it because it's in war, so nobody's right. going to buy Absolutely. it. And yeah. even if, you know, if, if something is worth, let's say, a million, now it's worth like 50000 you know, because yeah. of what's going on in inflation and economy and all that stuff. And so we decided to leave Iraq and uh, come to the U.S. And uh, I still remember the first morning waking up. It was like from an American movie, you know? I'm, I'm waking up, I'm like halfway asleep, and I can hear English in the background. I'm like, what the hell is this? Now I look outside the window and you see like from like a traditional American movie, you know, these houses, these perfectly lined houses, perfectly lawn, you know, mon and, and uh, uh, mowed lawn and like uh, a, a father pushing his child, like teaching them how to ride a bike and stuff like that. I'm just looking, I'm like, wait, am I watching a movie? Am I dreaming? What's happening right now? And I realized that, holy shit, I'm here. Got it. Yeah. You know, when I, when I migrate to Chile, when I move my... Chile, yeah. the same thing happened to me, like, but, but a month later, <laughs> like a month later, I realized, oh, I'm not in my country. I'm in another place. I need to understand these rules. Yeah. yeah. The same thing happened to me. Yeah. But, you know, to me, it was, um, it was surreal because I never thought, like, I only saw these things in movies. Mm -hmm. I never thought it would be possible, although for like a year, two years, we had thought of, you know, talked about going to America, but it just never actually, like, it never was real that I'm going to actually go to America. And it was one of the most difficult things because, you know, I was 16 at the time. I'm leaving a country where I was born. I speak the language. I have friends, you know, with school, all that. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm going to a place where, I, you know, I'm not a culture fit. Um, you know, I don't speak the language. It's, you know, I don't have people, friends. I don't have anyone to rely on. It's not like I'm coming with $100,000 in my pocket. Where it's like, all right, well, I can make things happen. I'm young. I'm 16 at the time. Never had a job in my life, you know. Um, so it was pretty difficult and we came with, it was just myself, my brother and my mom was already here. And then my oldest brother, my sister and my dad were still back home in Iraq. And did you do high school here or not? So I did go to high school. I went to sophomore 10th grade in Detroit, Michigan, and then we moved to California, San Diego. And then I went to junior and then half year of senior because I grad graduated a semester early. And that's that's when your mom told you like you have to be a doctor. Yeah, yeah. She she pretty much sold me on the idea that to be successful, <laughs> you gotta go to the doctor. Yep, gotta become a doctor. That was the vehicle for her. Pretty much. But not because you wanna become a doctor. No. You wanna become success. Right. But you don't know with yeah. what. Right. She wanted she wanted me to become successful and she knew that like that I I was destined to do to this, do something and for her it's a degree right mm. and uh, she had some like cousins or whatever that had become doctors and they were doing very well nice homes nice cars and she's like all right that's it you know your dad is not going to be able to provide for you mm -hmm. uh, because you know of everything that's happening he's too old now to come here and start from you know my dad is uh, right now is 84 years old oh, you know okay. so uh, you know whatever 15 years ago he was like almost 70 68 you know closing mm -hmm. on 70 so. It's not like he's going to come and start a business and do all that here. And he wasn't liquid. Mm -hmm. All of his properties were still back home, still tied up, all that stuff. And uh, talking about your family, what values do you like like about your family that make you successful today? Values or belief patterns? Yeah. Um, so I always grew up admiring my father. Um, and I wanted to be like him in terms of like, like a mover and a shaker. And, and he was like, he was the guy that everyone looked up to. You know, he was, um, 
was very well known in the community. Uh, people went up to him, you know, always uh, came up, came for him for, for advice, for money when they needed money, you know, because he was a wealthy guy. He had put all of his brothers and sisters through school. And uh, at 14 years old, uh, because his father also had a business that failed, and he was the third oldest, but he became the kind of the, the man of the house at 14 years old. And he would go and, and, and open up his dad's shop and work at 4 a.m. and simply work from like 4 to 10 p.m. or something like that and uh, care for his, for his uh, younger uh, uh, brothers and sisters. They were nine kids or seven kids. And so that hard work, that mm. work ethic, I always admired about him, you know? And uh, every time I, I think about it, I get emotional, but it was kind of like deep down that I always knew this is where I want to go. This is who I want to become. Mm. And this is why trying to become a doctor just felt wrong from the get-go. Mm. Because it was like, well, but my dad didn't become successful because of being a doctor, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, I've got the, I have a saying where, like, we both value mentors, right? Yeah, I do. Like, value mentors so much. And it's one thing to learn from your mentors, like, what they did right, but it's a completely another thing to learn what to avoid and when they did wrong and avoid making those same mistakes. And in my life, I have learned more and accelerated my, my growth more by learning what not to do more than what to do. And looking at my dad's experience, it was like, all right, so here are the things that he did, but what did he do wrong? And really I've spent the last at least half a decade you know, dissecting what he did wrong and making sure that I don't do that in my life and in my business. And that's really what's helped me. So, you know, going back to your question, um, it was work ethics. Uh, that was the first thing. It was the, 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 like being the mover, being the shaker, and also giving back. Uh, in 1989, he built a church in, in our home, hometown, which is a village northern Iraq. And um, at the time, it cost them a little over a million dollars in 1989. It's probably at least three, four times that yeah. now, if not more, right? And, um, and until now, every time we go back, you know, his name is on there on, on like a little nice rock and stuff like we've got pictures of it. Super cool. And, and that really meant a lot to me. And, and just being able to like help other people being in that position where, yeah, sure. You know, people come and like, you know, open their, 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 their hands over to you, but being in a position where if you want to help that you can help and that you will help, you know? And that's one thing that I found out about my dad is that he's got a very big heart and he really liked to help people. Although sometimes people took advantage of him, yeah. but it's like, you know what? I, I do my part. And if that's, you know, if you're coming to me with an agenda, then that's on you, not on me, you know? Right. But you know what? My, my father has the same work ethic. Like he works a lot. He loves his job. Mm -hmm. In my case, he really loves his job. So I grew up watching him doing so well in his job. And to me, it's like, okay, I want to do that too. I mean, if I'm going to work in, some, in something, I need to love it mm -hmm. as he does. But much of people don't have that. Don't have don't have a, a father or a mother that yeah. could teach them worth ethics or do what inspires you. Sure. So what what would you tell to that people? Like if you don't have these figures around your life, what can you do to develop in, in this kind of person? Can I cuss in here? Yeah. Okay. Uh there's a saying that I always say, it's fuck your passion. And I'll come around to what I why I say that. Um when my dad started his business, he didn't start with what he was passionate about. He started with how do I put my younger brothers and sisters through school, right? And then once he did that, he found an opportunity where he became passionate about it. Mm. So oftentimes, what, what you need to do today is probably you're, you're most likely not going to be passionate about it, but you got to start somewhere. And I've got a, 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 I've got a thing that I live by. Start where you are with what you have. I see a lot of people talking about, you know, I want to get in shape. I want to go back to the gym. All right, so I'm going to get a membership. I'm going to go and buy new shoes. I'm going to buy a new tank top. I'm going to buy a new bottle. I'm going to buy this. It's like, dude, just go to the gym already, you know? <laughs> Do the first step. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go to the gym and then you kind of figure it out later, you know? So if you live in that mentality, you're probably never going to do anything. Start where where you are with what you have. When I started my, my uh, um, when I started, when I got into Amazon, Amazon wasn't my passion, Right. But I had just lost the restaurant. I was $150,000 in debt. My dad had pretty much given me all of his money and I had absolutely blown it all. Um, he just stopped respecting me and thinking that I, like I, became, I went from the golden child to the black sheep of the family. And, and, I just, and I had just met someone that I thought this person is probably gonna become like someone special. I could see us actually going somewhere and I had no money. 
And so I needed to start something. After getting that train going and finding that momentum, then I realized, okay, I'm not passionate about this because I'm waking up every morning, no drive, you know, 8 a.m. became 9, and 9 became 10, and then, you know, going to sleep at 10 became 11, and 11 became 12, and 12 became 1. It's like, all right, there's something going on here. Um, I realized that I was passionate about helping people because I had been helping a couple friends here and there, and when they would get results or send me screenshots or something like that, I'm like, holy shit. Like, it was, it was something really cool felt inside, and I'm like, what is that? I want more of that, you know? And that's when I realized, okay, this is this is what I'm passionate about. And so I switched over to focusing just on selling to, hey, I am a seller, yes, but I want to help people become sellers, right? Because if I sell and I've got a business that's worth $10 million, I'm helping myself and maybe a couple employees and my family. But if I can, you know, uh, uh, help 10 people make a million dollars each or 50 people make $50,000 each, I'm now helping, you know, 50 different families instead of just my family, you know? And that to me was just more meaningful, you know? And then that kind of became a whole thing. So the same thing with my dad. He, and it's kind of funny because all of all of his uh, brothers um, became accountants by profession. So they went to accounting school, got a degree. He became the largest accountant out of his brothers and sisters without a degree, <laughs> you know? And because, again, because of the work ethic, whatever he did, he just did it the best. And an opportunity opened up. So he did that, he would... Um, he would work with a construction company. Uh, I don't know if they're construction, but what they do is they would pave streets. So they would work with the government, get like government contracts, and they would pave streets, fix sidewalks, all that stuff. And he became the contra uh, the the accountant for that company. It was like a large company in Iraq. And then he was approached by uh, uh, one of the investors in that company, or someone, a friend, or something like that. He's like, "Hey, man, like I love what you do for here." But there's this other failing company that's literally, they don't know what they're doing. There's 31 investors in that company. You know, everybody's kind of like running around, don't know what they're doing. It's a clothing co uh, company. I know you've got a clothing background because when he was 14, he was actually sewing clothes in Iraq, okay. in Northern Iraq. So that was his profession from like, just by picking it up from his father. But he had never done it after like four, 15, 16, 17, right? He went into other things. And he's like, you know, some things in, in clothing, why don't you go into this business and just kind of see if you can help out with accounting at least, you know, become a CFO. He went in, eight months later, he bought everybody out, including the friend that brought him in, <laughs> took over the company, and then he scaled the company by 600% within the following eight months. And then he became obsessed with it, and that became his passion. But he had not figured out his passion until he had money in the bank. He had uh, something going on. Yeah, because because you are safe. When you feel like you're safe, right. you can run about your passion. Yeah, and you're coming from a place of abundance. Your yeah. passion does not come when your your back's against the wall and you're you know you've got debt collectors calling every day and stuff like that. Now, look, if you are an artist, if you're a songwriter, if you are you know uh, uh, whatever it is, you've got like. This is, it's like you were, you know, two months old, you picked up a, a, a soccer ball and you've never let it go. Okay, well, that's your passion. That's your skill. That's something you were born with. But if you're, you know, 18 or 20 or 30 or whatever, and you're broke and, and, and you know, and, and, and you're trying to like, just kind of get your finances straight for once in your life, don't listen to all the crap out there telling you about find your passion. If you find your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. Yes, that's true. And today I am there and I know you're there as well. But I didn't start here. Mm. I needed to first take care of my finances, first be able to like wake up in the morning and not be stressed out because I've got 10 missed calls from 10 different debt collectors. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. One thing that I really like about co coaching and consulting business is that you can make so much cash. Sure. Like real cash. Because the only thing that you have to invest in yourself, sure. you, you don't have to buy like, I don't know, products or or at an office, you can start like with yourself and your knowledge and helping people sure. and you can get a lot of cash as a business. So to me, like coaching and consulting businesses, I love, I love what I do, but also it, it keep, it let me have a, a great wealth fast. Mm -hmm. I, I can like build my wealth so fast with this business sure. because cash is coming all day long. Like yeah. today I woke, woke up and, and my team was, okay, we have 31K on cash just today. Nice. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> how 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 in the world you do that? Yeah. Just with three cells, right? Or four cells, or whatever. If you have, you sell high ticket, so so I think if somebody is in this world, like coaching, consulting uh, businesses, 
uh, and it's not their passion, but they know something that could help every, every, uh, and anyone and could um, solve a big problem, you can make cash so fast. Right. And then you could do whatever, sure. playing guitar, sing a song or whatever. Absolutely. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's, it's, it's just finding a vehicle. Right. Yeah. And, and and that's the thing. It's um, like obviously with our business, with what I teach our students right now, at least it's physical products. So it's a little bit right. of a different business. You know, it's 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 very cash heavy in the front, but it's a lot more automated. You know, you don't have sales reps. You don't have like you could literally run a an eight figure business with like three people, you know, where an eight figure company uh, uh, where we are right now, uh, you know, we've got like 40, 50 people, you know, 60 people. So it's a little kind of it's a little different. But um, it's about the vehicle that, that you find, whatever the vehicle it is for you. And, and a lot of people say, well, why did you start Amazon? It's like, dude, it literally could have been anything. It did not matter at that point because I was just trying to do something. But you know? how Amazon get into your life as an idea? Sure. So 2015, April 28th, 2015, um, I got, it was 5 p.m. I, I left my restaurant to go pick up my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife. I got a call, 5 p.m. Uh, hey, boss, the, the kitchen is on fire. Oh, about your restaurant. Yeah. Because you had a restaurant before, yeah. right? It's like, all right, well, we've got an extinguisher. Put it out. It's like, no, no, no. We're all outside. The fire department is here. It's like, oh, shit. So I texted my girlfriend. I was like, hey, I can't make it. Something happened at the restaurant. I got to go. And so I go in there, fire, fire engines everywhere, you know, the smoke and stuff like that. And I realized that my restaurant, you know, my kitchen is absolutely destroyed. Three months prior to that, I had stopped paying insurance. Because for a restaurant, you need to have like a $10 million policy and all this stuff. And it was like $1,200, $1,300 a month in insurance. And my restaurant wasn't doing well. So I was like, all right, I'll just take this money, put it somewhere else. And instead of, you know, spending it on insurance, like what's the worst going to happen? Oh, my. Well, the worst did happen. Um, so over the following few months, I went into depression. I started uh, dishwashing at Hilton Hotel, started driving for Uber. And I went into this, this, um, this area of uh, this time frame of like, this is it. You know, I'm fucked. I'm 25 years old. Um, I'm a complete failure. You know, I, because at the time, you know, the business wasn't doing well for the longest time. I was in debt. I owed the IRS like $47,000. How old are you right now? Uh, 32. Uh, I think when we are in our 20s, we yeah. think like we forgot everything. That, oh, yeah. That the life is over. It's yeah. like, but we, we, we didn't realize like, I'm so, just 20 or 25 or 28, whatever. But I think when we get 30, yeah. it's like, Mm, That's no. when wisdom starts yeah, coming down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember when I was 25, when I turned 25, I thought I was going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so depressed. I was telling my girlfriend, now my wife, I'd be like, you know, um, I don't know. There's just not much going on for me here, you know? And I felt so old you because- were broke. Yeah. The restaurant was on fire. And, and then I think that's also what it is. It's it's that you feel that there's nothing going on for you and that you're growing old when there's nothing happening in your life. Like today, I'm like, dude, if, I'm, if I can accomplish this at 32, like I can't wait to be 40. I can't wait to be 60. Like, can you imagine? Another, you know, another three decades, like holy shit, you know? And so I kind of came around to, you know, what do I do? Like, I want to do something. And then I snapped out of it finally, uh, out of like, all right, this is not the end of me. It's just a, a blip. Let's learn from it. Because until then, it was like, whole, like it was just really being hard on myself. Like, I fucked mm. up. I did this. I did that. And your that. family was like watching oh, absolutely. you as, like, absolutely. you're a failure. 100%. Friends, everybody. And that's when I went from, holy shit, sky is falling, to like, holy shit, I have all this experience. Let me learn from it, you know? And then once I started getting in that, you know, uh, 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 state of mind, I, that's when I kind of opened up the possibilities again. I, I had met a friend, well, one of my friends that I had known since high school, I had seen him somewhere prior, you know, uh, a few months prior, and he told me about how he worked from home. I was like, what the fuck is that? He's like, I work from home. Like, what, what do you mean you work from home? What do you do you work from home? Like, to me, working or owning a business or whatever, it's like there is a physical location you go to, customers come, and, you know, there's a service or product being, being exchanged, and then in return, they pay you. So when he said, I work from home, I was like, what the hell is this guy talking about? And I still remember it. Um, I was at a Starbucks, I think. I had a, this, like, three, literally three-inch thick, like, 30-pound Toshiba laptop. Um, I went to Starbucks. I opened the 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 computer. The, the computer. I went to YouTube, and I said, "You're supposed to make me money. Show me how." And I just started researching ways to make money online. Whatever, oh, you know. Uh, the same happened to me. Yeah, I, I was thinking by the time of 2019, 
Like I need to work online because in my case, I want I want to avoid like politic issues and stuff like that that happen yeah. in Latin America. So yeah. I say I need something online that can save me from that madness. Yeah, sure. So I I, I t- took my computer and yeah. I start typing like. What can I do online yeah. for my money? Yeah. And like Amazon or I don't know, crypto, trading, whatever. Yeah. And I'd say, oh, but that's hard to me because I don't know anything about Amazon. I don't know anything about trading. What the hell do I know? Sure. And in my case, I was a consultant before. So yeah. I'm a consultant. Can I do this online? Yeah. Boom. And then yeah. it goes for me. In your case, you were running just a restaurant yeah. before. Yeah. I had like I had literally zero experience online up until mm. that point. The only thing I had to do with the internet was a Facebook page that I would post on maybe once every eight months. I had never even been online to research for stuff. You know, like, I like, and that's the thing that I, a lot of people ask me, oh, can I do this? Like, you know, I'm not tech savvy. I'm like, dude, I, I literally <laughs> had never even gotten online to search, like do any kind of search. Like I had never even used Google for that matter. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Maybe the only thing I used Google for was like maps, literally mm-hmm. going to places and that's it. And so uh, I think I also had a Snapchat. I'm not sure, but I think I want to say I think I did, but I'm not sure. But you you weren't like uh, a geek. No, I was not. Not at all. Again, I was all in retail. All of my life, I spent it working in restaurants. I worked in restaurants. My first job was at McDonald's. I was 16 years old in Detroit. Um, and then from there, I went to another McDonald's in California and then a Greek restaurant. And then from there, we uh, my family and I bought our first business in America, which was a pizzeria. Then from there, I went into my own restaurant. So it was literally all restaurants, and I thought I was going to spend my life all in restaurants, restaurants yeah. in the in the hospitality industry at least. You know what I mean? Like clubs, restaurants, bars, that kind of stuff. That's at that point, I thought, you know, I enjoy this. That's probably what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Like I was not thinking it would be online and what I'm doing today. Uh, no way. If you told me seven, eight years ago, this is what you'd be doing almost a decade later, I'd be like, no way, you're insane. You know? And so- Everything and, and anything came up to me. And I just started, you know, this and then started this and started this. And I tried it all. Affiliate marketing and network marketing and, and crypto. And, and I even oh, invested. You try it. Oh, I tried everything. I didn't. <laughs> I tried everything. Oh. I literally tried everything. You know, something about Amazon stuck with me. I don't know what it was. It just, it just seemed a little more appealing than anything else. And, um, and then I tried it. I tried this thing called arbitrage where you go to stores, you buy things in stores at a markdown and then you sell them on Amazon for a higher price. Mm-hmm. I remember it was, uh, I think it was December of 2015. I think, um, there was this toy. I forgot what it was. It was like a, a doll and, uh, they sold them in pink and in purple. I would sell maybe like, like 15 units a day or something like that. Whoa. 10 of them were of the pink, five of them were of the purple. I was making like $17, $18 a unit in profit, you know? And, but the problem was with this concept is that first I got to be driving around everywhere, you mm-hmm. know? And I was finding them at this uh, store called Home Goods, the only big box store in America that does not do inventory, which is, it's like, how do you even do business? How are you this massive company? So they can't like tell me, oh, we see nine units in this location, seven units in this location. They don't know what the hell are in the locations. So literally my girlfriend and I would take her mom's uh, SUV and we'd drive all around San Diego, go into different stores. We'd even have her sister in Vegas go drive around and find these things and then ship them to Amazon. But and then I try to go to manufacturers in Alibaba and then try to like manufacture my own. And I was like, and then they're like, dude, you will get sued. Mm. And I almost did that. And so, and then I was like, all right, this is cool, but it's not scalable. You know, like I can't be driving around all day. Like, that's not cool. I like the money. I remember the first day I woke up and I had a sale. It's like, holy shit, I made a sale. Like it was like 25 bucks, but it was the first time that I had never had to do, had to have a customer interaction. And to me, that was insane because up until now, I would have to buy the food, prep the food store it, cook it, serve it, clean after the customer to make like $10 on a sandwich and a beer. Mm -hmm. You know, where now I made 25 bucks, literally zero interaction, and I was hooked. But I knew that wasn't scalable, and that's when I found Private Label, which is kind of a whole different story. Yeah, and when was the moment that you realized that you want to help people doing the same that you was doing? Yeah, so (laughs) my wife's cousin, um, he was the first guy that asked that asked me this question, and this is a question that I almost ask everyone now that I uh, that I uh, work with or I interact with or everyone on their team. I ask them that. 
One time we were sitting down and he said, where, where do you see yourself in the next three to five years? I literally stared at his face for like three minutes. And I was just like, you know, staring, staring, staring. And he's like, don't you have a successful business? At the, this is late 2018. So I'm, I'm already a couple of years into Amazon. I'm already a seven figure seller at that time. Um, my debt is pretty much cleared. You know, I'm, I'm on my way to retire my parents. I've got savings. Um, life is looking pretty good. You know, at the time, I think my business was probably making about, I don't know, 15,000 a month in profits or something like that, you know? Pretty good. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, look, from where I come to yeah, that, so I mean, <laughs> I'm making, you know, six figures a year in profits. And with an Amazon business, I was probably working like 30, 45 minutes a day, max. I had two VAs in Pakistan running the entire show for me, you know? And so I'm thinking to myself like, okay, he's like, like, don't you want to do this? Like, keep doing this. I'm like, honestly, not really. He's like, why? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm making money, you know, in, in five years, I'll probably have a couple million dollars in the bank, you know, my business. And instead of it being, I don't know, I was maybe making like a little over a million dollars a, a year, probably be a five, maybe $10 million a year business. And, you know, I'll probably be vacationing at least a few times a year. I'll, I'll, uh, that year was the first time my wife and I took a vacation, uh, because we did not go on a honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, and she until now she remembers it. So. <laughs> um, and um, and so I was like, probably vacationing more, you know, maybe buying a nicer car, maybe buying a house. I, I don't know, like, but every like as I was rambling all these things, nothing was exciting. I was like, yeah, probably this stuff, you know. I don't know. And I was like, shit, okay. And the way he said it, I was like, wow, that sounds pretty terrible. What the hell? And around that same time, I had been helping a couple of friends because. You know, for about three, four years after my restaurant burned down, I literally went dark. Mm. No one could find me. I blocked all of my friends. I blocked all of my family. The only people that knew about me were my dad, my mom, and my brother because we lived in the same household. And I would literally leave the house at 6 a.m. I would go to Starbucks and not come back until 10 p.m. because I would get kicked out because they close, mm. you know? And that's and then I would go to sleep, and then this is what I would do for like two years. And um, You were lost. I was lost. You were so lost, yeah. Well, it wasn't even lost. It was about because I had found something and I just wanted to focus on it. Oh, okay. That okay. was after I found Amazon, oh, okay, right? Okay, okay, okay. And so I just wanted I to it was found- before, yeah. No, I just wanted to focus on Amazon, Oh, yeah, you right? were hyper focused on what you were I was doing. just like, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to talk to anybody, nothing, you know? And then I was kind of like coming out of my shell a little bit. So a couple of friends were like, hey man, where have you been? What have you doing? I was like, this is what I've been doing. It's like, holy shit, that's Bringing cool. Bringing my shit together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then so a couple of people reached out. I was like, hey, can you help me? Like, I, I, I've been hearing about this thing and the fact that you're doing it, like I thought it was a scam, but like, I know you, you're doing it. Obviously you're successful. I want to learn. Okay, cool. So helping this guy, helping that guy, you know, free, not charging anyone. Maybe I think I would like get on some calls, you know, charge 50 bucks or something like that. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy. Um, And I had a guy that I had been helping for a while. One day I got a text Bashar, you're the fucking man. Over the last six months, I made $36,000 in profits. And although that kind of sounds cool, you know, from like a money, money thing, but then we got on a call. And so this was a 23-year-old kid that he loved to, to uh, dirt, like he had a dirt bike and he would go around the country and he would like tour and all that stuff. He loved doing that. Again, passion. He had a passion, mm. right? But he was broke as shit. He would literally like borrow money just to go on these things and to pay himself, you know. But now he had a business that was running on autopilot. He had a VA, had someone helping him, and he was making profits. And now he can go and not worry about making money. And when I saw that, I was like, shit, that's fucking cool. And then you I changed started, his life. I mean, you helped him. I, I pretty much changed his life. And then he later sold his business and he got into solar. I don't know. He's got like a $10 million business now. But I transformed someone's life. And I sat with myself and thought about that. I was like, holy shit. See, now, now thinking about it, I'm like getting goosebumps, you know? I'm like, holy shit, I transformed somebody's life. Like, fuck the money. But I'm able to really impact somebody's life. And that was cool. A couple more friends reached out, same similar situations, and I just got hooked. And how do you start? Like helping um, people? For, for real, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, I, it was like, hey, let's get on a call. Let me help you out. Looking around their stuff. And then I would give them shitload of value. And then like a week later, like, dude, I've made, you know, an extra X, X amount of dollars. And then I'm charging like 50 bucks, you know what I mean? Or 100 <laughs> bucks, or, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm, like, to me, it was just like, 
Oh, for fun. I love, yeah, I love doing this. And it's like, yeah, and you know, I was making a few thousand dollars extra a month. It's like, I, like I'm like i passionate about it. And it's like, yeah, I make an extra 2,000, make an extra 5,000, I'm working a couple hours. Like, that's cool, you know? And then I like the whole industry like blew up. Everyone started coming out with a course and especially mm -hmm. Amazon, it, it became very hot. And then I like, I'm like, okay, I want to like keep learning, you know? So I started taking some courses and I'm like, dude, these motherfuckers don't know what they're talking about. Because you were already successful. Yeah, I was, you know, I was at the time I was a multi seven figure seller. And I'm like, these dudes are charging anywhere between 500 to 5,000. And literally these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. And people are getting scammed. And I literally would see it right before my eyes. And I'm like, that's not cool. And so I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to make a course. I'm going to make it cheap, but I'm going to make it fucking good. And I'm going to give them everything. And so I, I created my first course. I was selling it for $3.99. Oh, God. Okay, $3.99. And, and I started making YouTube videos because I'm like, I didn't know promotions. I, you know, I didn't want to start paid ads and all this stuff. I was like, okay, this is but too you, complicated. You don't do paid ads right now, actually. Well, I don't, no, no. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and I was like, this is too complicated. I don't know how to do all this. I'm just going to start YouTube because I actually enjoy making videos, you know? And I started making YouTube videos. I started the Facebook page. I started the Instagram page. And I was following Gary Vee. So it was like, post 65,000 times a day. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, all right, Twitter, everything, you know? And just literally producing content like a madman. I was producing like 30 pieces of content a day. I mean, it was just posting all day everywhere for like four or five months. And it just wasn't catching, you know? It was like not hitting. And then I would, you know, enroll four or five people a month. But it's like, they were so demanding. You know, and I was like, it's cool. Like, yeah, well, I'm here to help you. But I was handholding them. I was giving them everything, giving them my cell phone number. Literally, they would text me at 12 o'clock at night. I would respond, you know? And it's just like, it's like, dude, why aren't you getting results? Like, I just don't get it. Like, I'm literally, like, I, I'm almost doing it for you. And you're just like so lazy. All I got to do right now is just fly into your house, drag you from your hair, put you in front of your <laughs> computer, and then like press the buttons for you. And I started becoming frustrated. And then I would see all these other people charging five, ten thousand dollars, and then they would post about their students' results. I'm like, why aren't my students getting results? And I would buy these courses, and I'm like, dude, these courses are shit. My course is Better. badass. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? And then I went to this event, this guy that I had been following in San Diego, and um, and he was talking about high ticket. And and I, and, you know, after the event, I was talking, and he's like, how much do you charge at three ninety nine? He's like, dude, raise your fucking price. I'm like, no, man, that's, that's my, like, that's the whole thing. I'm, I did it because I want to help people for cheap and get them crazy results. He's like, well, let me ask you this. Does your program give them, if someone actually took it seriously, will it give them transformation? Will they mo make more than four or $500? Yes. Will they make $1,000? Yes. Will they make $5,000? Yes. Will they make 10? Absolutely. Okay. So why aren't you charging more? I don't know. When was the last time you got charged 20 bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever, and you took it seriously. Never? Okay. Charge more. And I remember I went to a thousand and I went to 1500 and I went 2000 and 3000. And the more I increased my price, the more people started taking it seriously. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, I was doing them a disservice by charging them less. And I'm doing them a service when I'm charging them more. Yeah, the, the same thing happened to me. I was charging 200 bucks mm -hmm. and then. 1k but mm -mm. I, my students weren't getting results and i said but why not i mean this this, this works i know it's good i mean it's, it's so good my students nothing 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 i had just two k uh, two two case of study with good results charging yeah. 1k per month and i had around 100 students and I, I don't know why they are so lazy yeah but because of that because they, they need to feel that they are paying and to, to do something when they are paying that hurts. Yep. It, it, it needs to hurt. Yep. Then I was, now I'm charging 7K and my clients get results in one month. Yeah. Like, oh my God, just, in one, just because we charge more. That's yep. it. Yep. It, it. It sounds illogical, yep. but it's not. It's yep. like pretty logical. Yep. Because people take serious when they pay. Yep. Yeah, the same happened to me. I, I, I want to ask you, um, when did you find, because... Now it's your passion. You are like educating yourself, you know, yeah. to to understand what you're doing. But when I first met you, something that I, I admire about you is that you are so clear in your mission and yes. vision about your business. Yes. But how did you develop it? 
Because now you're talking to me and you're saying me like, you were trying, you know? Yeah. But you were not taking serious like, okay, this is something that I'm going to do for four, five, ten years. And yeah. this is what I want to achieve with this. Yeah. When do you do that? Um. So it obviously started as I'm enjoying this and I want to do it because I want to do it. And I don't know where it's going to go. Like I, I didn't, I wasn't thinking eight figure, nine figure business when I started this. It was just like, I want to help people and let's go. Let's see where, where this goes. And then after a while, um, I realized that I realized the potential. And that's when we went on Instagram and did the whole shout out thing. And then that blew up. And then I realized that, okay, we're building something way bigger than, way bigger than consulting, way bigger than me and my team, way bigger than Amazon even. And so that's when I, I was approached by one of our uh, team, which unfortunately is not with us anymore. He said, hey, bro, and this was about two years ago. He said, hey, bro, um, from my experience and watching, he was really good at like seeing trends. And he said, something that I've realized with big companies that make it big. Um, well, first he suggested the book, Start With Why by Simon uh. Sinek. And he said, have you heard of that book? I said, no. And he's like, I suggest that you read it. I'm like, all right. So I read that book and that's when sh everything shifted for me. And he said, you know what the difference is between companies like Apple and Microsoft and all these companies and companies that we don't hear about? I was like, what? He's like, they are focused on their why, Microsoft, Apple, while the other companies are focused on the how and the what. When you focus on your why, when you know what your why is and make it bigger than yourself, bigger than your team, bigger than your company, bigger than anything that any one person can attain in their lifetime, that is when people will do anything to accomplish that one thing. And that's what I realized is that people will do anything. If you want to drive people, you obviously need to be enthusiastic. You need to have enthusiasm. And because that's why people like... Everybody, we all we all want to be led, right? Mm -hmm. Like we we like Sam Ovens because we think he's a genius, you know, and and we like to be led by him, you know, and and because you know, like for me, the things that I've gotten from him is like focus, keeping a thing, you know, keeping things simple. simple. It's very simple, right? Um, the reason why we 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 look up to uh, uh, say for me someone like uh, 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 Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> he was my my uh, you know he's always been my favorite actor. Why do I look up to him? Because of through Rocky Balboa, it's all about resilience. It's all about commitment. It's all about, you know, and I love to be led in that way, right? Uh, the reason why religions do very well and they have such massive following because they have a, a mindset shift, a paradigm shift that they install in people. And because they are going towards something like in Christianity, you know, we're going towards a, a, a resurrection and we're going towards like, you know, you're, you're being saved, right? We can't fathom, like when you think of God, let's say, you can't fathom how the universe was created. You can't fathom how sky is here and the ocean is here. It's like, as much as you try to put logic into it, it just makes zero sense. Mm -hmm. And the more that I try to understand it, the more I get confused, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you just got to have faith and believe. And Tony Robbins says, um, if you want to, to be fulfilled in life, you got to have something that pulls you. And instead of having a pushing power, you got to have something that pulls you, right? And when it's something about bigger than yourself, it pulls you. You don't need to be pushed. You don't need to be motivated. I don't have to come to you every morning and say, let's go, let's crush <laughs> it, let's close this deal, let's do this. I don't need to do that because there's this massive power in the future that you know deep down you're probably never going to get there, but it's just so inspiring that it pulls you towards it, right? So for us... It's about impacting the lives of 1 million people at a time. And it's funny how that happened is we thought of, like when we first started the company, it was like impacting 1 million, 1, 1 million lives. Like, holy shit, that's a lot of people. And then and then as we started growing, like, wait, that's not a lot of people. There's 7.5 billion people in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And then we're like dot, dot, dot at a time, mm -hmm. you know? So so right now it's every almost everybody in our company, we have over 60 people, um, Almost everybody is a college dropout or or has gone to college and after they got their degree, we're like, wait, what I'm doing? This with is this. it? Yeah. You know? And so this is why they resonate with our mission, because our mission is to become the world's leading university in creating entrepreneurs who can set their own destinies without going to school and wasting tens of thousands of dollars and learning shit they'll never use. Right. So that's our mission. And uh, uh um 
And, and it's very simple. It's impacting the lives of 1 million people at a time. And so once I realized that and I made it about bigger than myself, bigger than our team, bigger than just everything, not only our team resonated with it, but now our students talk about it. Our students in our community. I want to be part of your mission, man. I want to be one of the 1 million lives that you want to impact. Like this is the thing. When we get on the, when we get on the phone with people, this is the thing that we hear on the phone. Like, yeah, I want to be part of the 1 million you guys want to impact. Like, oh shit, okay, cool. Super powerful. Yeah. And so, and because we're talking about it all the time, we're putting it out there all the time, you know, on our Instagram, on our social media, stuff like that. And so our community believes in it, our community of students, you know? And so you get on our community and it's just like, it's like cheerleaders, you know? Everyone is like <laughs> just so happy and stuff like that. And and I have people, you know, they'll reach out to me. Hey man, thank you very much. You've impacted my life. You did this, blah, blah, blah. And I look, I'm like, wait a second. You enrolled three months ago. You haven't even made a penny on Amazon. Why are you so excited? It's like, dude, but it doesn't matter. It's the community that you guys have created. It's the environment. Because like, I know for, like when we go to, to quantum, we look around the room, it's like everyone is excited. Everyone want to crush. Everyone want to change the world. But that's not really how reality is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget that because we live in that world every day and we think that everyone else thinks like us. Mm -hmm. But people don't. 99.9% .9 of people don't. And so everybody else out there doesn't. Like your clients, they don't have that in their lives every day. So when they come to your community and they see everyone is here to crush it and everyone is like hoorah motivated, it's like, holy shit. That's I want to be why part of this. Yeah, that's why communities are mastermind. It's so important if you are going to be an entrepreneur or if you already are an entrepreneur and you want right. to scale up because you are going to be around people that want to crush it every single day. And right. around you, you don't have anybody like that. Yeah. So that's the value of the community, I think, to me. Because in my case, I mean, I moved from Venezuela to Chile. I don't know anybody in yes. Chile, right? I don't know anybody. I just have my family, my mom, my dad, and my boyfriend. And that's it. And a couple of friends, but a few because in my country. And when I look around, everybody is like, no, I'm working on my work. Mm. <laughs> okay. I need something else. Yeah. I need people, I mean, like you, like I'm super excited about talking about your business, what you're doing, like what, what you want to achieve. It's like, oh my God, you can do this. Yeah, okay, I can. Yeah. No, I can. You yeah. know, after this interview, I, I will go out like, okay, I can do it. Come that's on. Right. Just, just because I talk to you, because yeah. I meet you. And I think that's super important. If you have a, a coaching business or a consulting business, build a community mm -hmm. because that is the part where you transform the life of your people. The content is good, but the community to me is powerful. Yep. It's more powerful. Yep, absolutely. 100%. I mean, sometimes uh, I have... Um, I have a few of our students, uh, a few of our students or our team reach out and say, hey, somehow someone downloaded some of the videos in the course and they're like selling it for cheaper or something like that. I'm like, cool, awesome, great. Like, aren't you pissed? Like, don't you want to go stop? I'm like, dude, it's not the content. It's the community that we've built. It's the environment that we've built. They're not going to get that unless they're here. They can go do whatever they want to do with the content, you know? Yeah, and one thing that I get from you right now is like, you don't, you don't, you don't need to have just a community. You need that community to believe in your mission too yes. and your vision too. Yes. How do you do that? Yeah, and, and so it's first, you need to be a visionary. You need to see something bigger than yourself first, mm. you know? Um, and you need to build the vision in your mind, but also understand and know how to communicate it to people. Because just it being in your mind, like it'll just die on your lips and never turn into anything, you know? This is why, uh, what's his name, Tesla? Mm -hmm. Like he was, he was a genius, but he never like Tesla did not become anything. You know, no one knew about him. When I, after I, um, after I, I heard someone somewhere mention that I'm not sure what his first name was, but his last name was Tesla. This was like in the 1700s or maybe even earlier. I'm not exactly sure. I, I don't know the ex exact story, but it was this, like this, it was like smarter than Thomas Edison, you know, at some point. And he was, you know, uh, um, again, I can't, rem I, I don't have a lot of context, but I can't remember exactly what he was working on. But he was this this inventor, and he had all these things invented, but he just wasn't, he had the vision, he had the creation, but he was broke. And again, passion. He had passion, but he hadn't solved his, his financial problems first. And so he tried to raise money from investors, but because he didn't have communication skills, he couldn't communicate his vision. It literally died on his mind. It died on his mm -hmm. lips, you know? Where someone like Elon Musk, you know, the guy really knows his stuff. He's a visionary. He has a vision in his mind, but he can communicate it to the world. And so that's the thing is that you got to understand how to communicate your vision to the world. And that's why I get a lot of people reaching out to us saying, hey, I'm broke. 
I want to start this thing, but I'm broke. I don't have money. It's like, dude, you just got to be resourceful. Like I was able to start a business and invest almost ten, fifteen thousand dollars when I was hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt. How did I make it happen? Just believe that you could do it. It's about resourcefulness. Yeah. It's about I saw the vision and I communicated it to people. You know, so it's the same thing. You've got a vision. You've got a belief. You've got a vehicle. Okay. Well, now it's like, all right. I don't have $10,000. Someone in this world has $10,000. Someone I know has, someone on my phone book probably has $10,000. Let me partner up with them. Let me borrow money from them. Let me go to the bank. Let me go to this. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, the guy that uh, that uh, that uh, founded KFC, Colonel Sanders. Oh, uh -huh. He got he got uh, denied like a thousand times or something like that until someone finally gave him a shot and said, okay. You only need one yes. One yes, yeah. exactly. And he was like 60 something years old when he started and then he died like a you know a decade later as a billionaire you know so again it's about having the vision in your mind but being able to communicate it to the world so first you got to dream you got to dream very big so i'm recently learning this this concept i don't know if you know the system eos no um so it's this this operate this business operating system and it talks about the visionary and the integrator right and the visionary is the guy that's got the the vision it's got like I'm going to go, I'm going to crush it, I'm going to do this, but like they don't care about details. They're not uh. detail-oriented. They're not very well organized. You've got the integrator on the other side. It's literally the counter, you know, the counterpart of that person, which is, all right, well, they're very realistic. They're not, you know, very optimistic at all. They're very grounded to the ground. It's like, no, I want numbers. Okay, this plus this, I want very logical, right? And so maybe you you are kind of a, 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 a an, an integrator type where you want to accomplish things, but you don't know how. You just need to find your visionary, right? So maybe like you've got an idea, but you don't know how to put it out to the world. You just got to find the person that will go out there and, and, and have the balls to put it out the world, right? But it's about, again, having the plan, having the dream, and then communicating it to the world and making the, the world believe in that you can do it. And also always, and this is like a must, this is like on top of everything else, you need to have people's best interest. And that needs to be mm. your North Star. If people feel once that you're deceiving, you're not being honest, you're whatever, looking out for yourself, they'll never, it'll just never be the same again, right? Um, again, by Simon Sinek, he's got another book. Uh, that book is called uh, uh, Leaders Eat Last. Uh, and it talks about being a servant leader being a, a leader that serves, that eats last. I pay all of my employees and then I get paid last. You know, I, I make sure that, you know, that they have clothes on their backs before I, I put on a shirt, you know what I mean? Or whatever, you know? So always coming from place of service, coming from place of I'm here to serve you. And after you're fed, then if there's anything left, I'll eat it. Otherwise it's fine. I'll, I'll starve. It's cool. You know? And, uh, and knowing how to communicate your vision. Perfect. And, uh, when do you start the university? Uh, officially 2019. Yeah, 2019. And we are in 2022. Yes. And you grow so damn fast. I mean, it was like, boom. Die, uh, night and day. You, you grow so fast. What are the main three things that you think help you to grow that fast in a short time? Um, first of all, it, it's kind of like... It's like a, like an overnight success. You know, people talk about overnight successes and they only see the glory, but they don't see the, the, the process. The yeah. process. Yeah. Well, because you actually, you started like with I, your restaurant, you know, I started, I started uh, at 19 years old. Yeah. That, that's where the last three years have been. Like I started three years ago, 13 years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so part of it, it's the experience that I've had. And again, like, as I was mentioning earlier about my dad, it's, it's having, I, I, I got from him knowledge. I applied it in my restaurant business. That bur restaurant business burned to the ground, literally, <laughs> right? And then I realized, okay, what I learned from my dad did not work. I need to pivot and change that. And then I applied what I, what I learned in my consulting business and that worked, right? And so some of, some of those things were people. Um, the whole solopreneurship hustle thing and the whole side hustle and the whole stuff, it's, it's, it's cool, it's cute when you first start, sure. But if you want to do something big, um, you need people. Yeah. You can't do anything by yourself. Mm -hmm. If you think that you are the smartest one in your company, first of all, you're delusional. You're probably not the smartest one in your company. Or you, or you are bad because, I mean. Yeah, and you probably got a big ego that needs to be popped. Yeah. And this was me. Oh. Because in my restaurant business, I, no one could tell me what to do because I knew it all. Oh, you were the big guy. I knew it all. 
I was a 23-year-old kid that knew everything about everything. <laughs> By 23. <laughs> yes. And if you're 55 and you've ran 10 restaurants and you're going to come to tell me what to do, get the fuck out of my restaurant. Mm. Right? You know, I had so, some people at the phone that they are like 40 years old. They yeah. have a consulting business, but they are not making more than 10 or 20K per month. Sure. And they treat my team like, what are you going to know about this? Mm -hmm. Like, I know everything. Yeah. So, the hell are you doing here you know i sure. think the ego is something important if you want to grow yes. because in my case every time i i try to to scale my business i realize i don't know anything you don't <laughs> i realize yeah. that, that what i know is just a tiny Nothing. thing you yep. know yep and and to me it's it's i mean it has been good just to understand that i don't know anything and yep. i need to learn from you from you from you from everybody yep. to do something great and to have people around me that are better than me in in ways that I don't. I'm not good at selling at the, at the phone. Sure. I'm not good about that. So I find somebody that is awesome, <laughs> better than me, yep. and is growing the business with me uh, right now. And it was like, oh, perfect. I feel relief. She can tell me anything what she that what she wants about selling. Like if she's told me like we need to jump, we jump, like, right. jump, yep. and that's it. And we get the results. But if you are like the big guy around. You cannot feed yourself with all the visions, right? Yeah, and, th and that's the thing. It's um, and that's when I made that shift. It was so incredible because what I realized is that when I knew everything, there wasn't anything else that I could know, and that's a very dangerous place to be in. Mm -hmm. And that's what people need to realize because when you quote unquote know everything, that means you know everything that needs to know. And it's like, well, if I'm here and I want to go here and I'm not going, you're stuck. But if you realize that I don't know shit, no matter how much you know, that's actually a really good place to be in because that means there's so much more room for growth. I'm here, I've been able to accomplish this by myself or with the help of people, but I still don't know anything. Awesome, I need to go here, great. Who can get me there? Someone else has done it before, let me tap into their network and then accelerate my learning curve. People talk about cheat code all the time and like, what's the cheat sheet? What's the shortcut to success? It's, it's not, like tap into a mentor. Yeah, you're just you know? paying somebody that did it. Tap into a mentor. Someone else has done it before you. I don't care what you're trying to do. Even if you're trying to go to Mars, you know, I've, apparently there's a few people that are already <laughs> doing it, right? Tap into someone else, you yeah. know? Um, call up Elon Musk and he'll show you how. Yeah, I think the same. I, I actually, I have paid, I think, more than a hundred k right just this year yeah to learn from somebody that is better than me that's awesome and but it's not also paying to learn is you have to to do the work yes like and fast yes if you in my case if i learn something i try to do it just yes. do it if it works nice if it doesn't i will learn about it yep. about it um but, but i think that that's a, that's a good point like the ego and uh, learn from somebody that it's better than you and to do the work like yeah. as fast as you can Yep. Are you agree with me? Absolutely, one hundred percent. I recently I went on this uh, this like um, I went on this thing of this self development spree uh, about two and a half three months ago, and um, and I was on a call with Ty Lopez, and he's like, because I one question that I always when I get on calls with these guys, uh, I was on a call with Dean Graziosi, Dan Locke, Ty Lopez, a few other people, and I asked the question. I always ask them all all of them that question is. If you had to do your career all over again, what are the two things you would do differently? And the thing that Ty said, he said, I would double down, triple down, quadruple down on mentors. And he said, always find someone. And he was one of the first guys online that was talking about mentorship and all that stuff and coaching like 10 years ago. And um, he's like, I would do it like a lot more. He's like, because one thing that I realized is that someone who has a 10-year experience and can deliver that to you in like a week or in mm. a month it's like that's something you you just literally can't can't. You're buying time. Yeah, you right. And so that's why I like reading books. Like I recently um, learned how to speed read, and it's insane. I'm reading like four or five, six books a month. Whoa. Where before I used to read one book every month and a half, you know. And so it's like okay, this author is taking literally like ten years of their life and they're compressing it in a two hundred page book that I can read in like a day and a half, two days. And I can literally download all that knowledge and then do something about it, you know? So I recently joined uh, Tony Robbins' uh, uh, like inner circle mastermind. And something mm -hmm. he talks about a lot is, is immersion, total immersion. Whatever it is you're trying to do. Like, and this is why I'm kind of trying to 
like I used to do masterminds all the time, you know? Now I'm like, mm, I don't know. I, I love masterminds. I think they're cool. But for me, one year is too long. Like okay. if you're going to download something to me, I want it in one hour. How can we take that one year in one hour, right? Because sometimes like there's a lot of fluff. It's like, okay, well, how can we do it in one hour? You know, obviously not everyone can afford to do that. I started with courses and then coaching and then masterminds. And now I can afford to go do one, you know, pay someone $25,000 an hour and, and sit with them and kind of take notes and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But obviously when you're starting, masterminds, perfect. But once you can afford it and people offer, because not everyone offers it, I don't offer one-on-one, right? Mm -hmm. um, do one-on-ones. Because for me, it's like, I can compress everything you know in like two, three, one-hour sessions. I can do that once a month. I'm good, thanks. I'll go on to the next person. But absolutely, coaching, mentors, that's been, I mean, it's like, it's been the, the, the thing that I'll never stop. I'll only continue to investing more. And, uh, and it's the one thing that's literally changed my life. And I'm just like, if more people can, re like I see so many people that are successful, but that could be so much more successful and they don't believe, like they have the same mentality I had like six, seven years ago where it's like, no, I'm going to learn it all by myself. Oh no! I'm like, man, only if you know what you're missing out. Mm -hmm. Only if you know where you'd be, you know? In, in my case, I pay for mentors at the first time, <clears throat> not because um, I knew they are, they will going to help me. It was because I, 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 I thought that I am scared to fail. So it's better if someone that have done it first, watch me fail. Mm. In my case, not because I, oh, I'm going to follow his lead. No, it's like, yeah. mm, I'm scared to fail because I, in, in my story, I, I take care of my parents yeah. at Chile. Yeah. So if something goes wrong for me, it goes wrong for all my family. Right. So I was so scared to fail. And I said, mm, if I pay a mentor, I will fail because it's part of the budget. But I will fill with someone with experience right. watching me. Right. And to me, that was safer. Mm -hmm. And I invest. I didn't have the money the first time, but I, I just for that, I invest. That's awesome. Like, and, and now that I'm hearing you, everybody told me like, no, you have to pay a mentor because you are going to grow fast. But if you are scared, you have to pay a mentor too. Yeah. You know, because someone with, with experience is going to watch you. Right. And that's what happened to me. And every time I can, I pay for mentor just because of that. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think, regardless what your reason is, there is no, I don't think there is any replacement for paying for mentors or just having mentors in your life. Mm. And this doesn't just have to be to do with business. Like over the last 10 years, I've only focused on my financial success. But over the last couple of months, I've, I've had a kind of a tragic situation happen in my life where I kind of started looking at life a little differently. And I've gone into other places as well where I have now mentors. I have health mentors. I have performance coach that works with, coach I have uh, relationship uh, mentors. And so, so that way I've got more of a, like a well-rounded life, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but it could be with anything, really anything that you're trying to do or figure out. It's kind of like marriage or parenting. It's like, there aren't really courses about that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like be, we learn parenting from our moms and dads. And it's like, I don't know if they've done it the best. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we've got, you so know. So far, so good. Yeah, it's like, you know? <laughs> well, for me, it's like, look, I've got four siblings. We're four and everyone is completely different. And I'm almost like, I don't know if my parents really had anything to do here. You know, it's kind of like everyone kind of went on their own and did their own thing. However, they found life to be, you know? And so, and this is kind of what's interesting. It's that like, look, whatever it is you're trying to do, someone else has done it and perfected it and mm. probably systemized it. So why are you gonna, and again, it goes back to ego. No, if they can do it, I can do it. You know, if they figured it out, I can figure it out. And you like, can, but you no, are going to fail in the meantime. You're going to, to spend a lot of hours doing it by yourself and yep. frustration. I mean, it's, it do, doesn't worth it. It's Absolutely. not worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Talking about marriage, I was talking with uh, Brian Moncada and okay. Jose Peña. And both of them said that to them it was so important when they choose their partners of life. Mm. So is that important to you too? Because I was impressed. Like I didn't ask them about that, but they say, you know, something that is important in my success is having someone that bring me peace mm. and support me yeah. in the journey. Yeah. What about you? Um, so the first time I, uh, I think there was the first mastermind mm -hmm. that I got into uh, quantum Someone asked Sam about his relationship with, with his wife. And Sam said, you know, all of us entrepreneurs, we have two lives. We have life at work and we have life at home. Only one of them can be chaotic. He said, because 
if both of them are chaotic, you're going to half-ass both. So he said, your business life is always going to be chaotic. Yeah. You know, you'll, it'll just, it, like, you just got to accept that it's, that's how it's going to be, right? Because, as, especially if you're growing. Now, if you're, you know, if you've built a system and it's like, all right, well, I'm going to be at X per year and that's it. I don't want to grow. I just want to sustain. Maybe not so much, maybe not so often, but especially if you're growing, it's always going to be chaotic. There's always no ceilings. There's always no stuff, right? So your home life has to be 100% stable. And around the time, my home life wasn't very stable. But when I heard that, I was like, shit, it's actually impacting my life at work. And I remember my parents, because my parents' life wasn't really very stable. And I remember my dad telling me that how he was in love with his business and he would just literally run away from home and just go focus on his business because that was like his getaway place, you know? But also he would take his shit with him when he went to to uh, to work. He would take all of his like his baggage from home with him. And you can't you can't leave it at home. Like it comes with you whether you like it or not, right? And so for me, I met my wife at the worst time of my life. Like literally I could not have met her at any worse Before time. Before the restaurant? It was it was six about six to eight months prior to my restaurant burning down. Oh god. And 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 when I met her, I was completely broke anyways. Although <laughs> I had a business, but the business was failing, my life was failing, everything was failing. I was stressed out all the time. I was for about six, seven months, I would go to sleep every night thinking I'm probably not gonna make it through the morning. Because I would go to sleep so stressed mm-hmm. out, so anxious, I'm like, no way I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. No way. I'm going to probably have a heart attack at night and just die, you know? <laughs> God. And and so when we met, it was it was very odd because it was about like a month before. Um, it was a country town. So there was this rodeo that comes to town like twice a year. I had saw one of her friends come to the to the rodeo because she likes country music. And, um, and she saw me. She's like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, I own this place. No shit. Okay. I like to come here, blah, blah. And then so we started talking, um, her friend and I, we know each other from high school. And so one day she's like, hey, I want to come see you. You know, I love your bar, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to bring a friend with me. Cool. Who's the friend? My wife. Oh. Well, my wife also went to high school with me and I knew her brother, but we didn't know each other. You know, she had a different group than I did. I was like, oh yeah, I know you, blah, blah, blah. And we started talking. Her birthday was two weeks later. I liked her. So I slid in her DMs. I was like, hey, happy birthday, blah, blah. And then we kind of, and then kind of took off from there. But again, it wasn't meant to be a relationship and become what it became. Going back, had I not met my wife when I did, I don't know if I would have made it here. Because my, although yes, we asked, especially after like Gary Mary and stuff like that, you know, we had some problems and all that, sure. But I'm like, I don't know how I would have done it being single. You know, being a guy, I would probably would want to go out and mess around and do this and do that. And it's like doing that while building a business, I don't know how that would have worked. Yeah. Because regardless how w- crazy work was, I knew that I can come home and put my head on a shoulder that's going to just like be there for me. You know? Mm-hmm. I always knew that. She was like the backbone. Mm-hmm. So I, I've got friends right now in their 20s that reach out to me for like relationship advice. They're tr- They're single successful. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to be in your situation, man. Because, you know, I've got particular one of them that comes to mind is always like, fuck, it's Monday. I promised myself I'm not going to go out this weekend. And, you know, if I go out, I'm going to come home at 11 o'clock. I'm going to go to sleep. And then he hits me up next Monday and it's like, dude, last weekend I went out. I got I got home at five o'clock. I feel like shit right now. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, thank goodness I don't got to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, yes, he is a little younger than me. But again, when I was 20, when I was 23, I had pretty much, that was like from 20 to 23, I used to party seven days a week. But at 23 is when I bought my restaurant. And that's when my party day stopped. Because mm-hmm. uh, I was working 120 hours a week. And from there, it went from the restaurant to all the other stuff. And then just my party days pretty much stopped at 23. So almost for the last 10 years, you know, now I value other things, just not partying and, you know, getting home at five o'clock in the morning, you know? Well, that's about the focus too. Yeah. Because you, after your restaurant was burned, you were so then focused on what you wanted to do. Right. And how do you deal that with a partner? Because you need to be like so focused on what you're doing. Yeah. And you don't have time to, I mean, you don't have 24 hours to be with your partner. Yeah. And, you know, she, luckily she wasn't very needy. Okay. You know, she wasn't the I kind of girl. that's a key, you know? That is a key. That definitely that, that, is a key. To, to me, it's a key too. If, you, if you're if you an entrepreneur and you want to grow your <clears> business, <throat> I mean, 
growing a business needs so much of your energy. Yes. A lot. So yes. you don't need, you cannot be with somebody that you is cannot. needy. No, you no. And that's the thing is if they understand, you will be with them. If they don't understand, you're just going to have to make a choice. I, I saw a little uh, mm. little reel by uh, Kevin O'Leary, O'Leary earlier this morning. Um, he was like, you know, if you're if you're growing your business and you've got, you know, your business is generating five million dollars in cash flow per year, and you've got a fiance that's complaining about like, you know, you 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 don't come to and see my family, you don't do this, you don't do that, you, you got a decision to make. Which one is easier to replace, your business or your fiance? You know, so it's like it's kind of the same thing. It's like, look, they've got to be understanding, they've got to see where you're going, and they've got to be willing to come the the ride with you. She did not understand my business. Hell, until now, she doesn't really understand my business. But she has made so many sacrifices that regardless how much I try to give back, I'll never catch up. Mm. One of the sacrifices she made was moving from San Diego to Miami, which is a cross country, first of all, a, a, a state we've never been to, no nobody, all of her life. And she's very like close to her family, close to her mom. And she wasn't young. She was 28 at the time, 29. Wait, what am I talking about? 30. And um, and and I just literally on a whim, I just decided that I wanted to move. And within six months, we had already moved, you know? And um, as it uh, jokingly until now, she says, You kidnapped me. You know, I've been kidnapped. You know? and I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. So again, she moved. And I honestly I thought deep down, we had been married a couple of years, and I thought this move is either going to build our relationship or absolutely destroy it. But I think this is a good test to what kind of a relationship we have. You know, because we're here, there's no one, there's no way out. We're going to be in each other's faces all day long. We're either going to be fighting all day or, you know, having having fun. And luckily, we've been having fun. The first couple of months was a little tough getting used to yeah. everything and stuff like that. But it's been awesome, you know? Awesome. Yeah, I think that's like a great point because um, I, I have been watching some of my clients that are single and they spend so much time partying, finding people, and your energy just go to all the way, you know, yeah. your focus go to, to all the way. Yeah. And to me, it's important to have a, if you have a great partner, that that partner don't, don't, doesn't have to be needy. Yes. And you need to keep focus yes. on your business at the same time. Yes. So, oh, I, another thing that, I, sorry, the, another thing that I want to ask you is, um, okay, you grow so fast in two <laughs> years, two to three years, you grow so fast, but also not, not only your revenue grows, also your team. Yes. How do you do that? How, how many people is on your team right now? Um, and, and that's, in the you university, know, in the university. Sure. And, and that's, that's another thing is we grew a little too fast, too quick and too much. And we had to kind of step back and contract. So uh, in 2020, in 2020, uh, which was year number two, well, 19, uh, 19 and 20, it was just me. And then mid, uh, I think it was mid 20. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Late 19, I brought on number two. And then uh, it was my first hire, which was a sales rep. And um, 2020 was just me and him all, all year long until end of 2020 is when we started bringing on more team. 2021, we grew. Uh, 2021, I think like June, July, we were about maybe 10 of us. Whoa, you, you, you passed from two to 10. Yeah. Okay. And then from there, uh, because we expressed, uh, we, we experienced growth uh, October, November of 20, uh, 2020. And it was for us, it was marketing. We had just to figure out marketing uh, because I, I had figured out sales. We had good sales reps. And, um, but marketing for me was always a problem. It, was, it went from organic and I was doing very well organically, but then I was working like 18 hours a day. I'm like, all right, this is my passion, but I don't know if I want to work 18 hours a day, you know? <laughs> um, again, I went from like, I, I got back into the business and I just couldn't do anything else, you know? And so then I changed it. And I was like, all right, now what I need to do is I need to um, like hire more people. And so I, I went to paid ads. I did Facebook, did very well, and then scaled about $150,000 a month. And then from there, Facebook started messing around with us and then shutting down our accounts and blah, blah. Yeah. I started YouTube ads. YouTube ads was just not becoming profitable. And this was, um, it was September of 2020 when I said, fuck this, I'm done. I'm going to just do something else. And that's when I joined Quantum. And then, you know, he, Sam gave me a few tips. I fired our YouTube agency uh, and then was pretty much set at zero revenue for like a month or so. And then that's when I, I, I around that time, I had already started uh, shout outs on Instagram. Okay. okay. I, had, I, I knew that there is potential in, in, in Instagram. Uh, uh, in but, but how did you find the shout outs? 
Somebody yeah, so, teach you how to do it? No, no. So um, one our 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 um, our account manager, the company that was doing YouTube ads for us, our account manager was like, "Hey, bro, I've got this other client that's doing this thing, influencer marketing on Instagram, and he's doing pretty well." I was like, "Okay." So I started looking at it, and I was like, "This is cool." So I would just kind of reach out to some of those uh, motivational pages, and I'm like, "Hey, I'm trying to do shout outs with you, post, blah blah blah," and I would create a post and then send it to them, and then they would post it, and then there was really nothing. <laughs> and then um, at the same time, I also had hired an agency to like just um, uh, to create content for me on Instagram. So that's a little more consistent, more professional. And they weren't generating any results. One of the pages that I was doing shout outs to with reached out and was like, hey, bro, I see what you're doing. I think it's incredible, but your IG strategy sucks. Let me help you. I'll run your Instagram page for you while doing shout outs on my page as well. I'm like, look. I'm not interested so much in posting content as much as I am in influencer marketing because I know that's where the potential is. And I was like, all right, no problem. First couple of months was just posting on my con on my page. And then it went to focusing more on promotions. This was August, September of 2020. Um, October, I was like, hey guys, I'm going to be pulling absolutely out after first mastermind and seeing Sam Ovens in like a forest and <laughs> in New Zealand. And I'm like, this is what I want to do. I'm just going to focus on like scaling paid ads because with con organic, you always got to feed it. It's not like, you know, paid ads. You could literally find one paid ad and can make you millions of dollars, yeah, you know? That's right. So I'm like, I'm just going to focus really on YouTube, trying to make that work by myself. And so I had stopped. If you go to my Facebook right now, you're going to see a post from 20, November 2020 saying this is my last post on my personal page because that was the main uh, driver. I had stopped posting on every YouTube everywhere and it was just Instagram. And they're like, give us another month. October, we did like 10,000 in profits. November, we did like 25,000 in profits. December, we did like $50,000 in profits. And I'm like, okay, let's keep going, you know? And then it just scaled and it scaled and it scaled. And then 2021 came around and we brought on more sales reps. They started hiring more marketing. They were as an agency doing work for us. Mm -hmm. And then as the vision of the company grew and as the potential grew, I sold them on, hey, you have more potential here than you, you know, bringing on 20 different clients. I can feed you guys. We resonate with each other. We like each other. Come on and lead our marketing team. So they gave up the whole agency idea. They started building our own in-house oh, marketing team. Oh, wow. And then from there, just exploded. So, uh, you know. Uh, and they are the guys I met on Quantum. And Quantum, yes. Oh, yeah. they're genius. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they, they are genius. Are. Yeah. And so this is like earlier when you were saying like, what is the contributor to the growth? It's people. Mm -hmm. It's people and realizing that I'm not a best marketer, realizing that I'm not the best sales rep, realizing that, you know, and then my first hire, which was a sales rep, now is our head of uh, uh, sales and leads, you know, 43. I know him too. He's yeah, amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he leads 43 different sales reps. So 43? Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. But how many are... Total in a company, yeah. uh, 65. 65. Yes. Whoa. How, how do you did de that? I mean, but that, that's a huge. Yeah. So, so we grew to over a hundred at some point oh this year. God. We grew, we over hired the shit out of everybody. <laughs> we grew to almost a hundred and then the company absolutely broke down. Um, because we were growing while building systems, while, while hiring, mm. while, you know, uh, putting like culture and all that stuff. And uh, we just weren't ready. And we hired too fast, too quick, too big. We just it went too crazy. And then the company pretty much broke. I, I think you know? Sam ha had the same problem, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But Sam, um, see, Sam wasn't clear on his vision. And that's the thing, the difference between what we have mm -hmm. and what Sam had. Mm -hmm. Sam did not have culture. Sam did not have a vision. Sam had a business and I want to make money. Mm -hmm. And when you lead with that, you won't go very far. Mm -hmm. And this, like, the way we preach, it's we're here to serve. The more we serve, the more money we make. Our paycheck is a byproduct of us doing an incredible job at serving people. And this is why having a mission and being on a mission that's bigger than yourself, bigger than the money, bigger than your team, bigger than everybody, it's important. Because when you make it about the money, you're going to get to a point where you will become numb to the money. You know, 10000 I think it was like, there was a stat that I read. It was, I think, sixty or $65,000 a year. Once you surpass $65,000 a year, that covers your like human needs, yeah. like what you need to survive, you know, your your car, house, whatever. After that is just like, that's when you go into like 
desires and not needs. You know, you go into wants, not needs, right? And it's like, all right, well, you go from 65 a year to 65 a month, and you go to 65 a week and a 65 a day. And it's like, well, how much is money going to be the driver? You know, mm -hmm. you look at people that have made it big and have lost everything. Mike Tyson, you mm -hmm. know, um, there are so many names that I can name right now, big celebrities that just make it at insane levels, make hundreds of millions of dollars, and then poof. Why? Because there was no purpose in their life. And that's another thing that I wanted to mention here is something that I learned from uh, uh, Tony Robbins recently. He talks about the concept of the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. And he says that he's got billionaire mentor, uh, billionaire clients that have achieved you know, success at massive levels. And they've completely figured out the science of achievement, but they're absolutely miserable mm. because they don't have, have not figured out the art of fulfillment. And it's an art because it is an art, you know? It's not, it's not something that it happens, something you gotta create. It's created, right? Where with science, it's, it's more of like our numbers and put this here and put that there. Unless you have fulfillment in your life, the money will not drive you forever. It won't be a driver. It'll be a driver for a year, five, maybe 10, maybe 20 even. Um, if you're all into about yachts and bigger planes and bigger houses and mansions and all that, great, you know? But you will get to a point where it's like, holy shit, I'm empty as fuck. Mm. And everybody in my life only cares about my money. Once that goes away, I'm gone. No one cares. But then once you have something in life that fulfills you, that actually excites you, that you're inspired by, that is the one thing that you no one can ever take away from you. They can take away all the money. It does not matter. You'll wake up next morning. If I win the lotto tomorrow and I make $10 billion, I will wake up tomorrow morning doing exactly what I did this morning. Mm. Because it drives you a lot. Yes. Yeah. If if I like take your process, it's like zero to seven figures. It's like, okay, find your vision. That's so important. But you need to focus on marketing and sales. That's where you were focused. Marketing and sales. If you are not good at marketing and sales, Find somebody that could help you at that. Yes. And to eight figures is like, okay, systems, right? You mentioned people, people yeah, yes. systems, great team, and the vision again. Yes. Like, honestly, zero to seven figures, I don't think the vision even matters. Even matter? It's, it doesn't, I, sell, I, don't, I didn't have, and, it's, yeah. it's just about selling. Zero to seven figures, you just got to know how to sell. If you've yeah. got a decent marketing strategy, if you've got a decent air, place of flow, if you know how to sell, you could do anything. Um, seven to eight, it's marketing, at least for me. Yeah. For uh, and then now eight to nine, it's, it's, um, it's seven to eight, it was vision and, and, and marketing. Uh, but eight to nine, it's, it's processes, it's people, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's definitely leading with heart and leading with vision and having something massive. Bigger and having than you, so much I mean, than you. I mean, huge. I yeah. mean, like, when I talk about it to normal people, they look at me like, you're crazy. fucking crazy, bro. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about right now, but I don't even want to talk to you anymore because it just sounds too weird. <laughs> you know, like insane. And then drive it every day, every single day. This is where we're going. And you need to be sold on it so much. It's like, I can see it. I can taste it. I can feel it. It's right there in front of me. And then just wake up and go for it every single morning. Uh, but it's got to be about the drive. It's got to be about the passion. It's got to come. That's when the passion needs to come in. Mm. You know, the, 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 like, that's where it needs to be fulfilling. Mm. It has to be fulfilling. You know, this is our next step is going to nine figures. We're at multiple eight figures right now. But going to nine figures, it's, it's got to be fulfilling. People around you need, need to be fulfilled. You have to have the right people and the right seats all the time. Yeah. And the right process. Yes. Yeah. Got you. Um, what are you going to do the next year? What, what, what are your goals for 2023? So 2023, we're going to be uh, scaling vertically as much as we can inside of the Amazon uh, space. Uh, right now, we're a one product company. So we would be launching a mastermind. We also want to launch software. Oh, uh, I think here is not... Uh, somebody has an Amazon mastermind here? Um, I there are a couple. But uh, I think we're going to do it better than everybody else. I know, I know. Uh, just because we've sure. always done everything better than everyone else. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so we're going to do a mastermind. Uh, and then also 30% of our students are actually worldwide. So we're not, we are focused mainly on the US, but 30% are literally, we have students from over 47 different countries. So, um, so it would be scaling as horizontally as we can within the Amazon space. So you have made eight figures just with one product. 
Yes. Oh my god. We're that's we're super we're multi. Good. We'll do a little over twenty million this year, with just one product. One product. Yeah. Okay. So stop doing so many offers, people. Stop. Yeah. Focus. Focus. Yes. In one offer. Yes. That's it. That's all you need. Yes. Mastermind end. What are you going to do after the mastermind? So so again, we want to scale as um uh, vertically as possible within Amazon. So it would be mastermind. It would be software. Uh, potentially there is another product that we want to do where we, it's kind of like, um, <clears throat> like having, um, I don't know if it's going to be like a fund, but more of like connecting investors with our successful students. So that way they can become like a stakeholder in their business and help them scale their businesses. Right. Uh, so that's an idea still in the, up in the air, but we want to scale as vertically as possible with an Amazon past 2023. We want to scale horizontally. And what I mean by that is. The reason why it's called BJK University and not Amazon FBA training, it's because it's a university and you don't go to a university to learn one skill. We realize that people all around the world are always looking for a better way of life. And in order for you to, you know, the reason why you're not here, you're not here and then you're here, this gap could be filled by awareness and a skill, right? Once you become aware that, okay, my skill level can only make me $25 an hour, in order for me to make $50 an hour, I need to better my skills, right? So you go and take a, get a certificate, you go back to school, you whatever it is that you do. So for us, it's what can we do to provide people other skills that they can turn into income within 90 days or less, right? Um, so it would be uh, some things that are on the table. It's either crypto, uh, real estate investing, uh, 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 stock trading, uh, sales, marketing, things like that. People that we can teach people a skill that they can put it into work, right? Mm -hmm. And earn with it. So that would be scaling horizontally. And then we would scale vertically within each space. So again, launching mm -hmm. a mastermind, software, all that stuff, whatever we can do within each uh, uh, vertical. And then kind of uh, a back end. Um, I've been very inspired by Tony Robbins and what he does. Mm -hmm. and, and I realized over the last three years, uh, over the last three months, is that success isn't uh, only determined by your financial success, but it's about your emotional success your relationship success, your well, spiritual uh, yeah. success. I, I was, uh, I, I am going to ask you, what is success for you, actually? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I can touch a little bit more about that. Um, and and so what I want to do is uh, I've been inspired to, We uh, about a, two months ago, we started this these like webinars, live webinars, just for the community, uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. all of our followers. So we just, I would just go live on my story and just say, hey guys, we're going to do a, a webinar in two weeks. If you want, register here. Send a couple of emails and we'll have like three, 400 people show up and we'll go two, three hours. And it's it's a QA, and a but it's more of like, have you been to a, a Tony Robbins event? No, no, never. But it's, I want to. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it'll change your life. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, I suggest it to anyone. Um, probably start with UPW, Unleash the Power Within. That's okay. like his lower level stuff and you can go from there. Um, but we, we started integrating different things because all these things we've integrated into our team, like breath work into a live webinar. We, we started integrating like exercises, live exercises on a webinar. Um, you know, exercises, things that have nothing to do with Amazon or business, things that they could do, you know, improving their relationships, working with them on just like all these different things. People have been going crazy about that, right? And so what I want to do is I want to implement more like seminars, whether it would be live or virtual, but like two, three day seminars or maybe like an all day seminar, kind of like what Tony Robbins does, where it's focused on wealth, it's focused on health, it's focused mm -hmm. on relationships, it's focused on this thing and that thing, you know? And so that would be kind of like another suite of products that BJK University also offers because I want, in order for you to be a successful human being and live a fulfilling life, to have the art of fulfillment, your finances have to come, yes. Yeah. But your finances are cannot be the only focus of your life. Mm -hmm. You need to be a, a well-rounded human being. Mm -hmm. And today for me, um, I have five pillars to success. Number one, it's spirituality. Mm. My 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 connection with the higher power for me, it's God. It it could be universe for you, it could be energy, it could be whatever it is, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, but something. Something, right? Mm -hmm. Higher power. Uh secondly, it's your health. Uh, because three months ago I was walking down a, 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 a supermarket with my wife. And I'm, you know, 150 pounds, 5'10", you know, work out five days a week. We have a chef that comes to our house and cooks for us. We eat at nice restaurants. I thought I was living an incredibly healthy lifestyle. I felt dizzy. 20 seconds later, I was on the floor having a seizure. Oh, my God. For the first time in my life. What um, happened to you? Uh, we can go into that. No, but, but sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, you know, I don't know. Um, but, went, but, saw neurologists, saw, did all this stuff. They found a scar in my brain. I thought I was going to die in six months. 
I went into anxiety and panic attacks for the next two months. Like this interview would not have happened if he had asked me two months ago. Oh. Because I wouldn't have been able to even come out of the house to come here. And I'd be sitting here probably shivering because of anxiety. Because to me, it was like, holy shit, I'm probably, I'm live. I'm probably going to freaking have a, another seizure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So I, I suffered from anxiety and like borderline depression for about two months. And I just literally, I'm, I'm still coming out of it, by the way. I'm not 100%, you know, oh, uh, but you're good. healed. You're but good. I'm good. Yeah, you're absolutely. Good. But it's because of resilience, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so health, if you've got $100 billion in the bank and you drop yeah. and die, it does not matter. Nah. Mm -mm. So health, and I know when you're building, health takes a backseat because it took a backseat for me for the longest time mm -hmm. until recently. Uh, third is contribution and gratitude. Uh, and that's very important for me. It's being grateful for the little shit that's in your life. Mm -hmm. And this could be the watch on your hand. This could be the shirt on your body, you know, and contributing because we feel the best when we give back. And this is why as coaches, we feel incredible because we're able to give back our knowledge and help other people change mm -hmm. their lives, right? Uh, and then it's, uh, 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 it's relationships because when my seizure happened and when I was, in a room with my wife and she was terrified. Yeah. Um, my parents- And you were alone here. Alone here. Yeah, yeah, because you moved from San yes, Diego. Yes, I yeah. looked around and I was like, holy fuck, I am lonely as shit here. There's absolutely nobody that's gonna ask about me, see how I'm doing. There's no one that I can text right now and say, hey bro, did you know that last night I had a seizure? You holy can text shit. me all the time, okay? My phone will be like <laughs> Well, I appreciate on, that. You know, you know no, no, I appreciate I, that. I, I, really, I, I understand what you say because my first time at Chile, alone, I, I had the influenza. Yeah. It's not what you had. Sure. But being sick alone is yeah. awful. It's yes. like the worst thing ever happened to me. So anytime, just yeah. call me. Well, I, 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 say, I say like, I really, will. because I, I understand will. what you've been through, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I was like, holy shit, this is a one lonely ass life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it like that anymore. Um, and then lastly, it's wealth. Mm. Yeah. So I've done wealth for the last 12 years of my life. And so now it's not taking a bad seat, although I thought for the first two months that, you know what? Fuck my company. I need to make sure that I'm going to be alive in six months. Of and course. so, like, yeah. And this is why I was saying earlier, like two and a half months ago, I went on this like self development. Actually, you are more like, uh, I don't know. I, I've been, yeah, I've been working yeah, out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I, I saw you on February, March. Uh, April. April, March, Mar March, March, yeah, I March, think. yeah. And, but now you're more like, yeah, I, I've been working out, got, got yeah. a, a personal trainer, yeah. Thanks for noticing, I appreciate it. No, that. yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah, he's doing, <laughs> he's working out. Yeah, I got a personal trainer, and again, it was like, yeah, like, yeah, because fuck you this have money, to be, yeah, you, have you know, to be good. What am I making all this money for, you know? Um, and so again, having a well-rounded life, you know, that's very important. And the crazy thing is, again, um, I have a performance coach that I meet once a week, and every quarter we do a two two day. 101 intensive. I just came out of one two weeks ago. And the first one I went into, um, the, it sounded like I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to grow my business to sell it, you know, because like I kind of want to go to, to India or China or whatever, become a monk and like just meditate all day. <laughs> and, and then after like grounding myself again, I realized that when you take care of all the other aspects of your life, your wealth actually grows even more. And I've done so much towards that in the last two months that I've ever done over the last two years. You know, it's just now I'm more passionate about it mm -hmm. because what happens for a long time, it's like, oh, this sounds cool. Yeah, I'll do it one day because I'm busy right now. I want to do that. Oh, I'll do it one day when I'm, and then it catches You've on to you. You've never done it, yeah. It catches on to you. It's like, why the fuck am I doing all this for? Mm -hmm. So where now, whenever I think of something, last week, my wife and I took a helicopter ride around the Bay of, uh, of Miami. This week, we're going to go on a seaplane that lands and, and takes off from the water, you know, for us, for me and her. Um, in October, we're taking a trip somewhere. Uh, uh, we went on this, uh, uh, like, this cool trip to, uh, to like, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, the Keys or whatever, a couple of weeks ago. Every time I think of something, I'm like, babe, let's do it. I'm booking it. Let's do it. You know, I don't care. I'll, I'll shuffle because my Because you realize my... you cannot be tomorrow there. Right. Because mm -hmm. I realized that, you know, I thought I was living a healthy lifestyle and bam, I dropped, had a mm -hmm. seizure. Mm hmm and although luckily I've been medically cleared, but now I've got two holistic doctors that I work with where I do acupuncture, I do like oxygen therapy, I'll do all this crazy <laughs> shit that three months ago I'd have been like, dude, get the fuck away from me. What is all this crap, you know? But now I but realize- you feel better. I feel a lot better, but now I realize that, you know, 
it can't, my health cannot take a back seat. Mm. It needs to be on the front row. I need to take care of it because if I don't, it suffers, everything else suffers. And then I realized that just my financial success isn't everything. I am going to the doctor, like after this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone should, you know, um, and, and it's important to take care of everything else and really sit down with yourself and say, what's important for me? And don't, no one is too busy. No one is too busy. I know it's easier for us entrepreneurs to say, oh, I'm fuck all that. I'm just going to do this. It's a lot easier for us to do that and get busy with our work. But trust me when I say, now I've blocked off one week. I block off three days. One week I block off four days where I'm not working in the business. I am working. I'm doing deep work, which some of it is like visionary, you know, big picture stuff. But, you know, on Thursdays, I call it a health and wellness day. Tomorrow I'm going to my holistic doctor to do acupuncture and do this like laser shit that she does to my back. I don't know what it is. You know, I don't understand it, but it's like, whatever. I feel like I'm doing something to my body. My body feels good. I feel good. I have more trust. I'm going to focus on that, you know? Well, I can't I can keep going, but we have to like, end it up because you're so interesting. 